First, save the game to Roblox. Choose a good name. Done. Now go to game settings and set avatar type to R6. Now go to the toolbox. Import an R6 dummy. Select all parts of the dummy. Then you enter them. Now open up the animation editor. Select the dummy and create a new animation. I will speed this part up. You are finished, save the animation and export it to Roblox. Make sure to set animation priority to action. Save the ID of the animation. Create a new script called IDs. Add the ID of the animation to the script. I'm using a plugin called Moon Animator to mirror my punch animation. You don't have to make your punches mirrored though. Control R is the key bin to mirror in Moon Animator, by the way. To export, right click the animation and click Save to Roblox. Make sure you have at least to hit animations. Remember to save IDs. Let's start scripting. First, add a folder into replicated storage. Then, create a remote event and call it Hitbox. You need a server script in Server Script Service. You need a local script in Starter GUI. Add all of the punch animations to the local script. Remember to add the animation IDs to the animations. We will start in the local script. We need context action service to detect player inputs. We then need to get the player, character, humanoid and animator. Now, we need to load the animations into the animator. Make sure the names in the brackets match the name of the animations. We then need to make a counter for which punch the player is on. Then we need to add a debounce to give the punches a cooldown. Now, we make the punch function. We first check if debounce equals false. Now we check which punch the player is on. You can make the wait duration anything you want. Now we bind the punch action to the function whenever the player clicks. Let's see if it works. It works! If your animation is buggy, check if your animation priority is set to action. As you can see though, hitting the dummy does nothing. Now it is time to make the hitbox. We will first access the hitbox event from replicated storage.
Make sure the name in the brackets is the same as the name of your remote event. They can be called anything, but they have to both be the same. Let's move on to the server script now. I copy-pasted the hitbox event variable as well as rs and the events folder. Make the hitbox creator function. Now create a new weld constraint and a new part. Attach the weld to the humanoid root part and the hitbox part. Set can collide and query to false. Set massless to true. Set the part size to the size parameter. Set the crane to the humanoid root part crane and apply the offset. Set the parent to the character. Now we do a touched event. We check for a humanoid. Then we check if the hitbox has already touched that person. If there is no hit counter for the victim, we will create one. Then we deal the damage. We then delete the hitbox. Doing this is the same as waiting and then using destroy by the way. Then we add the on server event event. Now back to the local script. Finally, we get to create the hitboxes. Size has to be a vector 3, offset has to be a vector 3, damage has to be a number, and linger has to also be a number. Let's see if it works. It works. Now you can mess around with the hitboxes in making them massive. Whoa! Let's make them sensible now. To make the hitbox invisible, set their transparency to 1. If I do the first punch and wait 5 seconds, I want it to reset the punch counter. Let's do this. Create a new variable called last punch. Then check the difference between the current time and the last punch. If it is greater than 1.7 seconds, then set current punch to 0. At the end of the function, set last punch to current time. We are all done! There we go! I've made a paste bin in the description for anyone stuck. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please leave a like and subscribe. Goodbye.